Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. Today, we have a Moorish sovereign citizen in court taking on Judge Perkins, whom you guys seem to love. And it seems that you really need an education on how this stuff works, and I'm gonna give you one today. Now today, we're gonna do something a little different, as this is nothing more than a simple arraignment, but the sovereign citizen shits out his word salad for like 20 minutes before the judge actually has a chance to arraign him. So we'll play the end of the video, which is the arraignment first, just so you know what charges he's dealing with, and then we'll get into his nonsense. So let's begin. I don't think that you're gonna entertain any offer from the city. I will say that the offer is pleading to one count of disorderly conduct, and uh, I'll buy no, you two hundred. I'm not, I'm not contracting. I'm not contract. I'm not let gonna me, contract me, with your city. Let me let me finish Order. what I have to do. Let me finish what I have to do. Okay, as far as the procedure is okay. concerned. This is uh okay, let's you're, 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 excuse me, what, excuse me, excuse me. No, 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 no. Let me finish and I'll get you, I'll answer your question. You're we're we're here on an arraignment for Mr. Uh Reginald Linton L um on one count entering without permission. That's entering dwelling without permission. That is uh ticket number U61322121, complaint number U61322121. Uh, the maximum possible penalty for that is 90 days in jail and or $500 in fine if you found uh, guilty of that. Uh, we're also here uh, on ticket number on complaint number U61322221 in violation of 38-11-2021. Um, of the uh, 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 City of Detroit uh, Municipal Code. The other violation is 314-1 of the Municipal Code for the entering out permission. And then the um, possession of cocaine is in violation of 38-11-2. Both of them are punishable by maximum, uh, uh, maximum possible penalty of 90 days in jail and or $500 in fines. Um, um, I'm going to enter a not guilty plea on your behalf, sir, and um, I'll set a zero dollar well, personal. Actually, I'm going to set a zero dollar personal bond. So illegal entry into a home, which is pretty common with sovereign citizens as they think that if they occupy a house that's for sale or while the owner's on vacation or while they're at work, then it's legally theirs. And possession of that booger sugar, more specifically. Crack cocaine. And the last time I checked, crack cocaine is not legal to have in the city of Detroit. This is the city of Detroit versus Reginald Ray Linton L. Case number is U613-22121 and U613-22221. Appearance for the record, please, or appear um, um, if he doesn't want counsel, then that's fine too. Do you, do, you, do you want Miss uh, Hatcher to represent you, Mr. Uh, Linton L? No. All right. State your name for the record, sir. I'm not here to contract with you. I'm just here as a meeting of the minds to get this case dismissed because there's no corpus delecta. And uh, I'm not a state, federal, corporate entity, ends ledges, if you will. Yeah, no shit you're not a state, federal, or corporate entity. At least one half of your brain would have to be not smooth for that to be the case. So, my documents speak for them for themselves. And well, that's what I was talking then there's about. The matter, that's what I was there's talking the, there's about. The matter, right, there's the matter of infringement. All right, all right, are you done? Oh, proceed. Yeah, and you said your documents speak for themselves. And that's what I was talking about. I spent the, uh, the, 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 the morning, part of the morning, reading, reading all the documents that you provided, sir. And, and like I say, from, from what I can gather and from what I know about um, cases like this, you're trying to say that you're sovereign, the Constitution uh, doesn't allow the city of Detroit or the state of Michigan to um, to to be able to police uh, their 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 streets and protect the health, safety, and welfare of their citizens, 
and and that the and the the, the laws that are codified under the state of Michigan and and the, and, and the, and the city of Detroit uh, do not apply to you. Is that correct? Well, the thing of it is, is uh, as it states here. If you read the document, as it states, I haven't harmed anyone. There's no corpus delicti. Uh, me, my going to visit it someone. Corpus, it is a corpus delicti. They, they, Where's the they corpus delicti? That you, they indicate that you have that you have crack cocaine on you um, in the city of Detroit. And the last time I checked, crack cocaine is not legal to have in the city of Detroit. Stupid city of Detroit wants to violate our freedoms by making a dangerous and community destroying drug illegal to possess in public. At this point, I don't know what's harder, being a crackhead, being a sovereign citizen, or being a crackhead sovereign citizen. There's no doctor that's well, gonna be able to give you a prescription for it, and, and this is the allegation that they've made. Now, I'll tell you this, well, I don't see any, okay. No, no, go ahead. Forget. Okay, I'll tell you this. I, uh, one thing I will acknowledge, and and and, and uh, I will acknowledge that as for the EWOP ticket, he did state in his pleadings that he was allowed to come in this house. He was in, he was invited in this house, or and, and the house was fully furnished, and um, he was in, invited. So I don't know. I, I, I do have some question about that. Um, well, I also have some, huh? That's what trials are for. Yeah, that's what trials are for. And he's made that, he's, he's at least made that case and asked for the crack cocaine ticket. I don't know, you know, is there any um, way to determine that it was actually crack cocaine? So well, those are issues that I have with the case. But as far as what you're filing, I don't, I, I, I really, the stuff that you've put together, it seems like you've taken a lot of time for, with it, but you're also kind of contradicting yourself in your own pleadings when you cite the Michigan Court Rule 2.02B that allows me, and it says that I can take judicial notice. And particularly in that document, it says, uh, A, when, when discretionary, a court shall take judicial notice without request by a party of one, the common law, uh, uh, constitutions and public statutes enforced in every state, territory, and jurisdiction of the United States, and two, private acts and resolutions of Congress of the United States and of the legislature of Michigan, and ordinance and regulations of su governmental subdivisions of agencies of Michigan, and the laws of foreign countries. So. At one point, you're saying that these don't apply to you because of your sovereignship, but then you cite a court rule that's saying exactly the opposite, that I can take well, judicial notice because the judicial notice gives me power to say that they do have a, a jurisdiction over you. Basically, what the judge is pointing out here is something that we've all said for a long time, that these jackasses want all the benefits and rights that are protected by state and federal constitutions, but when it comes to breaking the law, those constitutions simply don't apply to them. Well, there, there is no subject matter jurisdiction, and also, uh, again, uh, I'm going I'm to I'm go back a little bit. Uh, going to this home where the guy unlocked the door and said what he stated. Now, I went there to actually go. Now, I don't want you to, listen, car. let me stop you right now. I don't want you to state anything that may uh, you. implicate you, right? you. Incriminate right. you. I, I don't want that. you to state anything that, because now is not the time to defend yourself against those charges. I'm just saying that I see that what? in your pleading. Wait a minute. Just, just let me listen. I see that in your pleading, and on its face, then I probably would agree with that. You know, if you go into a, if somebody invites you to a home and you it's fully furnished, it doesn't look like it's a, 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 a it looks like they own it and live there. I don't know. I, on its face, that sounds like a good that sounds like a good argument uh, in, 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 in your behalf. I don't know what the 
police are going to say. I don't know whether they have uh, the ability to say that this property was not theirs, the person that you claim it was. But for for for, for the most part, I, I thought it was. I thought the argument would be a pretty good argument. But all this other stuff that you filed, I don't know what you're talking about, sir. I have no. Clue. Well, well, you need me to elaborate. Exhibit one. I mean, well, like one, I say, exhibit one is an authenticated birth certificate. Authentic, uh, uh, exhibit one is an authenticated birth certificate. Uh, that's actually that's actually expatriation. Uh, exhibit two. And what is, is that? Say that again. Expatriate. 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 What? And give me, give me, give me, give me your understanding of what that means. Well, in other words, I own what you would be going after, which is my estate. First off, that's not what expatriation means. Expatriation is basically giving up your citizenship voluntarily, and it's not as easy as these cave tards make it seem. You have to do it at an embassy, and it has to be approved by the very government that you do not believe in. But you know what? I, for one, welcome their expatriation. Now, can somebody please call immigration so we can deport these illegal aliens? See, I okay, am the beneficiary. Let's go, let's, let's, let's go to that. Let's go to that portion. I, I read that portion, right? And you file a document with the um, county, uh, 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 with the Wayne County Register of Deeds. And you, in this document, it says, in state, a state conveyance deed. And this goes back to October 14th, I guess of 2014, uh, it looks like, or 2019, whatever that is. And it says that by first party grantor, Reginald, Ray Linton estate, a foreign estate whose original address is 814 Jefferson Avenue, Memphis, Tennessee, to second party grantee Reginald Linton L, a indigenous man, secured party whose mailing address is this a mailing address I'm going to say on the record. Um, and, 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 then it, and then it kind of goes through what you're conveying of what you're conveying and it gave some consideration. Well, first of all, I'm looking at it like this. All right, are you saying that I'm conveying my estate of 814 Jefferson Avenue? Um, or, or Because when I look at this conveyance of a deed, that means you're conveying some property to somebody. And then if you're, if you're looking at it, if I take what I believe you're trying to say, it's just trying to say, I convey Reginald Linton estate to Reginald Linton L. Correct. I, then, but when you say that, then we're just saying, hey, Reginald Linton L can't go in the house without permission and, and can't have crack cocaine on him. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> And I can I can go around and around and 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 give it to you and like it me, is. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend too much more time on it. I'll let you state your your but because this hasn't been responded to by the by the by the city. Then you then you, and then let me just go through with some other stuff that I said. You got a document, United States Department of State, to whom uh, to all to whom this presents shall come. Greetings. I certify that the documents here unto annexed is under the seal of the state of Tennessee and that such seal is entitled to full faith and credit. Okay, I mean, are we talking about your birth certificate? That's full faith and credit. Um, but but you're just you're not you're not referencing any of these documents under the seal, so I don't know what you're talking about. Then you provide what, me what, which what, what, I had did, did you go ahead. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Uh, then you provide me, then you provide me what I had to go look up that that uh, the world the world political asylum card and the world government of world citizens card. So I go to their website and I looked it up. And in the last paragraph of the world passport, it says 
Pass a passport gains credibility only by its acceptance by authorities other than the issuing agent. So that in of itself, for this passport to be authentic and, 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 and people support it and recognize it, the other people beside the world passport people have to be able to say, I recognize that as an authority. And I don't know if the government of the United States recognizes this as any authority. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that the United States does not accept passports issued by the Kingdom of Narnia. Well, I use it to get into... I use it to get into the federal building uh, to, to take care of certain issues. And uh, as far as the, the document you were speaking in terms of uh, the Department of License and Regulatory Affairs, there was a diligent search done on my name to show that there's no liability or no corporate entity that has been registered under me. And the other issue is with all the, what you have before you is because, well, the yeah, courts are operating under federal debt collection procedure. And all of this I don't know, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know where you get that authority and where you say that. You haven't cited that in your in your brief at all, and I and, and I don't know that to be true. I know that the courts are operating. Uh, I, I know. Under the Constitution. You say the court is operating under the Constitution. Yes. <laughs> so so if you're operating under the Constitution, why is there an admiralty statutory maritime flag behind you? I, I, I didn't get that. What do you say now? I say, if you're operating under the Constitution, why is there a statutory maritime flag behind you? A statutory maritime flag. Yeah, that flag that you have that you have behind you is a flag that actually belongs out at sea. So that's that's Admiralty Maritime. Admiralty Maritime. As someone who served in the Navy, I can tell you that. Admiralty Mary time is when the commander of a carrier group plays a drunken game of pin the harpoon on the destroyer. And, and the and the alleged the laws that you that you quote or and preside over your Michigan citizens with are statutory and codes. Right. I they're not they're not they're not common law. They don't have to be common law. They've been codified. If you read the whole, what? if you read the whole Constitution, the Fourteenth Amendment gives the states the power to codify their laws. All right. So, Mr. 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 Uh, Linton L, I just um, I, today is only the date and time for arraignment in the matter. So, um, right. I, I want if you if you don't mind, I want to uh, uh leave here again. Mm -hmm. To leave. I don't want to see you with no clothes on, sir. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Uh, ex exhibit five is uh, an, a certified document from the Library of Congress where there was an act to provide for a government for the District of Columbia, and and which happens to be a municipal corporation, uh, which happens to be where you are, a, a municipal corporation. Now, the document that you stated about the United States of America, United, uh, United States is given full faith and credit and so forth, is where a, a legal search was done by my name. And see, I'm not my name. My name is, was given to me to distinguish me from you and so forth. No, your name was given to you as a baby to distinguish you from the rest of the rocks outside. And regardless of whether you identify as yourself or not, you are yourself when it comes to the law and you will be the one held responsible for breaking it. So if you go and look at, I think it was exhibit five, exhibit five with my identification on it states, that uh, Memphis, Tennessee Republic it says nothing about a District of Columbia or private or municipal corporation. 
I wasn't born in a corporation. So there's the subject matter jurisdiction. And here's the proof that I'm not a, a ends religious, uh, if you know what that is, off the top of your head. You might have to go research that too. That's a create a creature of the law. See, legally, you guys can do what you do, but how, how much lawful it is, as you state, that you, you operate under the Constitution. Well, if you look at, if you go back and look at my signature on my identification, UCC 1 308, not to be compelled to perform under any unrevealed contract that I haven't entered into without knowledge and knowing of all said contract. And I don't have a contract with you guys or the state of Michigan. And well, again, I, and, and, you said there's a corpus, you said there's a corpus, you said there's a corpus delecti. Where's the corpus delecti? Because you can't injure a corpus, a corporation. Hey, you can't injure, and I got your, 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 your duns and brass yes, suit number. Yes, you, yes, you can't. Listen. Yes, you can. Uh, listen, let me just say this. I know you're not going to believe what I'm saying because you have formulated your own uh, belief, but you can uh, criminalize a company and a whole com a company, a corporation criminally responsible. You can do that. Okay. You can hold a corporation so, criminally so, responsible and you can hold the officers of that corporation criminally responsible. Okay, so here's the thing. That, that officer, uh, which is not an officer of the court, issuing out contracts for me to engage with your municipality and him issuing a contract, he don't have a right to issue no contract to, to me for me to engage with you. And then, as a matter of fact, that's why I quoted in here in the in, in the uh, the affidavit. That's why I quoted in the affidavit uh, on page number four. It states. Who may serve generally process in civil actions may be served by any legal competent adult who is not a party or an officer of a corporate party. He's an officer of a corporate party. You 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 operate corporately, and where you work is corporate, and 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 he's a private mercenary. I have several Supreme Court cases where it states that police officer has no constitutional duty to even protect anybody, so he has no constitutional duty to protect. He don't have a right to to uh, harass either. Now, the other thing about some cocaine, he didn't have a warrant to, to search me or my truck. When are these idiots gonna learn to stop snitching on themselves? You literally just admitted to driving around with an illegal substance and probably eliminated several of the defenses that you could have had to fight the case. He just pulled me over now and assumed what he assumed. Now, now but, listen, listen, now you're talking language that I understand. Now, none of that was in your brief. The only thing that was in your your actually, your, actually, your, actually, it is, actually, it is there because see, the term, the term, the well, it's, it's in there. It's in there. The terminology that I use would, would wasn't wouldn't be what you would use. Where it states I didn't harm anybody. That in in your legal lease terms would uh, uh, replace. Um, We got we got to be speaking the same language in order to talk. I understand what you're saying. I understand we speak very the same well what language. you're saying. And I and and, and okay. I got to I, I got to speak the language of, uh, of 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 the of the written law and how it's written and the way you write it. I mean, I can't I can't go into your well, mind. Well, to well you well you say language. right. Well, you say law. You say law, and I and I I see something legal, which is nothing more than statutory or code. And to me, those are actually, that, that's private law. So why did you cite the Michigan court rule in your, in your brief, right in your brief? Well, why did you tell me? That was cited, why did you tell that, me? Why did you that, tell that, me? That, that, was cited, that, that, that was cited, because if you go in the beginning of uh, where it states that I'm appearing specially, not, you know, not generally, but specially. I don't know what, I don't know what that yeah. means. To be fair, neither does he. Now, before we close this all out, I have one more little nugget of troglodyte goodness. Well, I, I see you only been there since 2021. And, uh, and from that point to this point, I don't know how long 
you know, that is. And I, I don't know, because uh, they don't t- they don't they don't tell everybody everything. No shit. But they definitely tell lawyers and judges more than they tell someone who never attended law school to begin with. All right, guys, that's where we're going to end the video today. There was a bit more, but nothing significant as they were just setting up future court dates. Now, I did everything in my power to find his future appearances, but unfortunately, there weren't any. Typically, that could mean one of several things. Either he beat the charges or he settled out of court or he got rearrested and his future appearances were in custody. Now, I hate to speculate, so I'll leave that to you guys in the comment section. Also, if you liked the video, leave a like. If you disliked it, leave a dislike. But don't forget to subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss any of my content. I'm Team Skeptic, and I'm out.